Good evening, everyone. How are you guys? You guys are live here on the Dixie Bell Paint Facebook and Instagram page. This is my uh, my magic wand tonight. It's going to be my pointer. We're live on location. We're live on location. Live on location. <clears throat> um, you guys, my name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy. I come here and paint with you guys live every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, my husband Sean is here to answer any questions as we go, so pop on and let us know where you're watching from and let us know if you have any questions. We're going to cover a lot of information tonight. I think it's good information though. Um, so let's go ahead and get started, you guys. We are out here in front of my house and that's because we are going to do a little, uh, we're going to get messy tonight. We're going to get messy and I don't like to get messy in my workspace, even though my workspace is a mess. <laughs> um, so I showed on my page earlier, this is the piece that we're going to work on today. So let me tell you a little bit about this piece. Um, this is a, a Jacobian style buffet, and that just references like the leg style that's on it. Um, and we picked this piece up locally, and when we found it, it was sitting out in a field, basically. <laughs> Literal. Yeah, field. literally in a field. <laughs> it was a barn find. This is 100% a barn find. It is a gorgeous piece of furniture, though. But, and it's sturdy. So it's sturdy and it doesn't have any damage. Those are the key things to look for. If you're gonna pick up a barn find, don't bring home the ones that have water damage and warping. <laughs> Skip them, it's not worth your time. But this barn find was in really good condition, um, but the finish had degraded so much that it was almost like a powder sitting on top of the wood. So it had to come off. There was no way I could paint over this piece with the finish in the, in the condition that it was. So I started stripping it down. Um, and I started by using my surf prep sander. And I saw a couple of questions on my page about the surf prep, and I'm gonna go ahead and, and answer a couple of questions about surf prep really quick. Now, surf prep is the best sander you can get for sanding into crevices, but when you get into small, tiny little fingernail crevices, even in here, there's no sander that's gonna get in there. You need to get a different tool for that job. Surf Prep does the best you can get on the market at getting into some details, but there comes a point when you're either going to have to do hand sanding or we're going to do some soda blasting tonight. I'm going to show it to you guys on camera, and that's what we did to clean it up after I sanded everything with my Surf Prep sander. But I want to run through with you guys the pads on the Surf Prep and what the different pads are for. So when you get your Surf Prep, it's got a regular uh, firm pad on here like any sander does. And this is kind of what makes this sander different than most, but you can add different pads onto it to make it convertible. So this, you can add a foam, whoops. Um, you can add a, these all uh, Velcro on. My Velcro is getting a little old. I actually have a replacement to go on there that I haven't put on yet. You can add a pad on here and then you can add your sandpaper over that and that gives it a little bit of flex. Do you see that? That gives it a little bit of flex. It can flex around a curve now. See, watch when I push it with just my fingers. Okay, so you can work that into a curve. This is one of their papers. This is a paper backing. They come with film backing. Same thing, you can put it on that pad. It makes it convertible. And then you can see how you can press that into curves. Okay, so that's one option. If you're sanding a flat surface, just like a regular sander, you can put your paper or your film right onto that firm flat surface and that's the best thing. If you're sanding a flat surface, you don't need any of the foams, just like that, okay? Um, and then there's different densities of foam. So some of these are, you can get a foam that has the abrasive already on it, and that's a little firmer of a pad, okay? It's gonna get you into different types of crevices. So this one's thicker, it's gonna give you more give. So I take this off, and this is a little bit thinner of a pad. These are old, you guys, these are not new pads. Um, I wash my pads out, by the way, I wash them out and I reuse them if they're not too damaged. After a few uses, you lose them and they're gone, you've got to throw them away, but I do wash them out. This is a thinner pad and it's got a little bit less give, it's just a, a slight give. It's gonna get less detailed crevices because it doesn't have as much give. So it just depends on the depth of the surface that you're trying to sand. How deep are the crevices? Are you trying to get into, you know, this, right here is only, it's pretty shallow. I could probably get into this with one of my foam abrasives, but there's no way I could sand out. This is a super fine molding up here with floral detail. There's no way that an abrasive is gonna get in there and get all those details out. And we'll get in there in a minute so everybody yep. can see that. Yeah, um, so <clears throat> that is where I sanded everything that I could and then uh, my surf prep did its job. Uh, love it. 
Mm. You did your job. Um, and that is where we stepped into soda blasting. So you probably hear the term sand blasting. Sand blasting uses sand. Sand is very highly abrasive. So what it's going to do to raw wood, it's going to leave marks Forget in about it. it. It's going to eat your wood up. So sand blasting would, is usually used more for metal surfaces and things that you're not going to damage. Wood is softer. So you don't want to sand blast. Um, there are different types of abrasives you can put in a blaster. You can use um, walnut shells which are slightly more abrasive too. That's probably a little too abrasive for, for something like this. So we used uh, soda. And what soda is, it's calcium bicarbonate. <laughs> Baking soda. <laughs> Baking soda, you guys, is what we blasted this with. That bag wants to roll. So I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of this on 50 the 50 pounds. This is not your kitchen baking soda. It's much finer. This is a 50 pound bag. It's just from um, Harbor Freight. And it's a really fine baking soda. But the reason that you use something this fine is because if you use something coarser, like a sand or a walnut shell, you're going to leave pockmarks in your wood. Sorry, guys. If you're getting any blurry, it's because the camera's probably trying to focus in on the details of the piece. Um, so that's the baking soda. And like I said, this you can get this on Amazon. I just picked up this bag at, at Harbor Freight. It was like $40 for a 50-pound bag. And then, let me pour this, put this back in here. It's eco-friendly too. So when you do this, if you need to use your leaf blower outside after the fact to get it off your driveway, you can, and it's not going to harm anything. It's not going to kill anything. It's it's sodium bicarbonate. It's it's baking soda. Um, then you put it in a gun like this. It's got a hopper on the back, and you just fill the hopper. This side connects to your air compressor. And then it's just sprayed. So we're going to go ahead and spray. I left one leg on this piece undone so we can go ahead and spray it. And I'm going to get in close and I'll show you guys how it cleans out the details. Um, you guys, we are going to do a finish on this piece tonight. But I wanted to talk to you guys a lot about how we got to the point where we are right now with getting it down to raw wood. And why I chose to take this down to raw wood. You know, by, I paint a lot of pieces of furniture. But the finish on this was so degraded. I could not put paint over it. It was like... I mean, it was just crusting off the piece. Yet again, take, it was a field find. Yeah, I could take my fingernail and I could scrape the clear coat, the old clear coat off of this piece of furniture. It was so degraded. I did fill some spots. So I had little bits of damage here just from the veneer. So I got a couple fill spots with Dixie mud. Just very small spots on there. So, I mean, it had minimal damage. I just needed to get it to raw wood. And then now that it's to raw wood, I can't paint it. I can't paint it. It's so pretty got all these different species of wood in it. See the dark versus light. Sorry, we got a plane going overhead, guys. Um, the plane, the plane. So I'm going to do... Let that plane go by. Um, I'm going to do a wood finish on this. I don't want to add paint to it. Now that I've got it to this point, I can't put paint over this. So I'm going to add a wood finish to it. We're going to do, and I'll show you guys that as we go. So I'm going to swap with Sean. And I'm going to let him do the soda blasting because he had the honor of doing this for me tonight. <laughs> sure, it says, did you trade the rooster for that piece? <laughs> no, we got both. Oh. Because you don't hear it. Yeah, no, we, we got the rooster and the piece. It's a win-win. Yeah, we're winning. Uh, we still have the rooster. You guys might hear him. He's quiet. Maybe the plane scared him. Maybe uh, he had a heart attack. Uh, I heard him all last night. <laughs> all right, so we're going to swap. Do your thing. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, this this camera Oops. stuff's easy. Oopsie. Can, can you, you can you glasses? stain Dixie mud? Great question, Sean. You can stain Dixie mud. So here's the thing about it, though. You can, you guys can see it's it's going to be a slightly different color than the background because it it will stain, but it's going to take it at a different color than the wood behind it. So yes, you can stain it. It's you're just going to notice it a little bit. It's not going to be you you can layer you know like gel stains over it and try to camouflage it. Um, but it does take the stain a different color than the regular wood. You want to try to use Dixie Mud. That's the closest color to your background color. So um, in this case, I used brown Dixie Mud because it's on brown wood. If, um, um, if I had a white background, I'd use white Dixie Mud. And then I've got a better chance that it's going to stay the same color as the background of my piece. Can you use a Dremel tool? 
So you could, um, you'd need to have all the head, the head fittings for a Dremel, the uh, like rotary brushes and stuff like that. This is much faster. I did not take any veneer off of this Cheryl. This is all the original veneer on here. That's why it's got those couple patches on there because it's all the original veneer. Like I'm looking at this, it's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so Sean over here is set up with his <laughs> gun. So I'm gonna take you guys in cause I wanna show you, this is the leg we're gonna spray right here. And you can kind of see where we left it that it's got, let me show you guys, this is the leg we're going to do right here. Um, we left some of the original finish. Oh, ooh, How do you like? ooh, huh? I love. Um, <laughs> it's got some of the original finish on there, but you can kind of get an idea how badly degraded it is. I, I did see on the front of that. Um, you want to cover that can of stuff down there. I don't know what, cover that can of stuff down there. I don't know what can you're talking about. Um, well, I'm not, I'm not going to spray this direction. Yeah, no, we're out We're out in my driveway. Everything's closed. Everything's got a lint on it. It's got yeah, a nice vanna. Um, <laughs> so it is going to make a mess. What it basically looks like everywhere is it's going to look like it's snowed. So we've got this tarp down. And then what we did afterwards, let's go ahead and take a look at that leg. Experience my pain. Wants to swivel. Okay. Um, oops, sorry, Facebook. Love your work, just don't know how to order products. Robin, that's really sweet of you. Um, Robin, my link for Dixieville products is up in the post at the top. Or if you go to my Facebook page, my links are always pinned to the top. The first post you'll see on my Facebook page at Brush by Brandy has all of my links in it. They're always pinned to the top right there. That's my links for Surf Prep, for my Amazon shop, for Dixieville, for anything that I work with is always pinned to the top of my Facebook page. And it's in my profile on Instagram. Will you be finishing the mauve piece? I finished it last night. I need to photograph it. Okay, so we'll go ahead and let Sean get, get to work, and I'll keep answering questions. Oh, Sean has nice legs, too. I agree. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm just going to mask up. Yes, so okay. you want to so wear it's... a mask when you're doing this. It is a fine, fine uh, abrasive it's going to spray out. Doing it outside is best. That way... Uh, you don't want this in the, your living room for sure. We have a tarp down. So what we did afterwards is we took the tarp and we folded it and all the abrasive went into the middle and we put it back in the bag to reuse it. And we w had about, um, would you ask about me? A quarter. About, about a, a quarter of the bag that's wasted. About a quarter of the bag that just is wasted that's in our driveway that we're not going to sweep up. We'll just air blow it out. Um, let's see. Will you fix the bottom of the leg? Great question. We were just talking yeah. about that before I went live tonight. Yeah, you guys can notice I'm missing the little uh, the little round there. So I have a couple ideas for there. Because it's a wood stained finish, um, I can't I can't make one out of resin, which is normally what I would do with something like that. I'm gonna probably take a bun foot that I already have and cut the front of it off. It's blurry now. Okay, I uh we why. Okay, we just came back, it reconnected. Can you bring that over? I yeah. think it when it's closer. All right, hopefully it's better, but keep me posted. All right, so Sean masked up. He's gonna go ahead and fill the gun. We can see you right at the corner, right here, if you wanna sit by the, right okay. next to the corner well, of the... Little, do you wanna watch me, or I'll yeah. show you how to load the gun? Yeah, load the gun. Nice, nice super sweet uh, scoop. Okay, so he just cut a scoop out of a, a I don't bottle. know, a water bottle. Tea. It's actually tea. Oh. Yeah, it's okay. Your mistake. <laughs> Please forgive me. <laughs> and it just goes into the hopper. And there's different types of these guns. You guys, this gun was probably 30 bucks. It was in, It's inexpensive. There's different types of guns. Some have bigger hoppers than others. This one's a gravity piece. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was another one that has a bigger hopper on it, um, they, but they were all in the same price range, fairly inexpensive. Now, here's what I'll say about this. You know, if you do a lot of pieces, this is great for a piece with fine detail. Um, it's not something that you would use every day. Um, so it really depends on what, what type of piece that you're doing. If you do a lot of pieces, this is gonna serve its purpose. I'll store that bag of soda. I've got the gun now. Um, you know, and all for a, a pretty small investment that'll get me whenever I need to use this type of tool, I'll have the option. Yeah, I'm going to look a little funny, like always, and then try to talk as well. 
Okay. So. So this is also the adjustment, the adjustment lever. We as can far hear you. As the thickness. Okay. Or how far, how, how much is going to come Sean, out of the plug. Sean has a mask on, that's why. Woo! Looks like a sci-fi movie in here. Well, it does later, actually. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Just me or Smokey? I'm not, so my comments are not updating on, on Facebook, you guys. Oh, there we go. Yay. What's he loading in the sprayer, Sh Cheryl? It's sodium bicarbonate. It's baking soda. Baking We're going to soda blast the leg on this piece to get it to the raw wood. Okay, go for it. Okay. You can see it just wants to leak out. It's like magic. Do you see that, you guys? Yes, yes way. Yeah, but we can't see the back side. So are you yeah. gonna do the back side? I'll no, move. If you wanna come I'll over here. Yeah, I'll move. You should move. Okay. <laughs> like to a different house. <laughs> Let's go in watching he's gonna do the back side of that same leg, you guys. And then now we can see the contrast. Okay, hang on and I'm gonna get the okay. cameras back on. Okay, so we're gonna Sorry do the back side. You guys see how the you guys see the finish on there again? So we'll do the back side of that leg. Go what? Ahead. Yeah. Do you hear the air compressor going in the background? <laughs> Rhonda, you may have to catch up on, on the replay. This will be available on replay. Uh, how long did it take to do the whole piece? About an hour. It's a very detailed piece. Uh, the top I was able to sand, Diana, because it's a flat surface. This really is needed for the spine details. Is there any liquid in that or just the soda? No liquid, just the baking soda. So that was the basic process. It did take him about an hour to do the entire piece. Let's go look at some of the details, okay? So you guys can see what's already been done. That was the process, spraying down all of these details. Do you guys see this molding right here? Facebook, you guys have it. And there you go, Instagram, you guys have it too. You guys see all this detail right here. That's a really detailed molding. It's all cleaned out. Um, Joanne, I'm gonna probably cut a piece for that um, wood leg because I'm doing a wood finish. What size is your compressor? Five gallons? Uh, five gallon, Okay. which is too small for this it, job. It is, yeah, that's what I just wanted to say. We have a five gallon compressor. It does have to refill the air and it doesn't give us the uh, spray power that we needed. So a bigger compressor is actually recommended. Okay, so now that we've got all of our details clean, that's how we got to this point, you guys. I sanded the flat surfaces. We soda blasted the... Um... <laughs> now that we're switching, I get to see the comments. Okay, we soda blasted the fine detail, sanded the, the flat detail. So if the question's posed for, if we can use that for paint, unfortunately not, the nozzle... How thick oh, the product... Well blasting paint off. Yeah. Paint off, you could sand blast the paint off. It's not for putting paint on anything. You don't put anything on with that type of gun. The nozzle's too large. Okay, so let's talk about putting a finish on this. Now that you guys can see how we got to this raw wood, I'm just dusting this off because it has a little bit of the powder dust. You can the ground. It looks like it snowed all around us. And so we'll just take this tarp and fold it up and all the powder goes to the middle and we'll funnel it back into the bag and reuse it. If you've got stuff that has debris in it, you probably don't want to reuse that. Just just let it go to waste. Yes, Christy, the, the gun is from Harbor Freight as well. Yeah, the gun and the soda are both from Harbor Freight. The gun was about $30 and the bag of, of um, soda was about $40. But it's gonna, la that bag of soda, oh my gosh, I'll be storing What's that going forever. back and forth? Yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll take forever. Oh, we're a little fuzzy, where's the? in my pocket okay you want to take it over there? yes ma'am okay so then i decided on this one that i want to do a basic whitewash finish i want to leave the wood intact but i want to get some white in here into the crevices i want some white to pick up the grain in this wood just a very soft finish still a wood finish but with a whitewash on it 
Um, so you have a few options when you want to whitewash your wood, and, and I'm going to show you all of them tonight. Um, you can do it with Dixie Belle paint. You can take your paint and add a little bit of water to it and just do a diluted layer of paint. And then you take it and you wipe it back off. You're washing it, putting the paint on, washing it off. It's a wash. So a wash is an option. You can use a Voodoo Gel Stain in White Magic. You can use No Paint Gel Stain in Pickling White. And White Wax is also an option. The basic difference I would say in doing these as a, as a whitewash is how potent of a finish do you want? How white do you want your white? Um, so the most potent of these is gonna be either the paint because you can control the dilution of it or the gel stain. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys gel stain. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick a detail and I'll show you guys these different finishes. I'm gonna need you I'm gonna need everybody to hold because Amazon's pulling up to drop me off a package. Sorry, Jamie. <laughs> Timing. Oh, so uh, as far as the item that Brandy handed me, it's a portable MiFi. So it basically converts a cell phone signal over to a Wi-Fi. So when you're, you know, way deep and wherever and there's no internet, you get one of these puppies in theory and it'll convert a cell signal over to a good signal platform. We have a pretty platform. strong cell signal where we are because uh, there's a nature preserver cell tower in it. And so it, it works pretty well. Um, my husband or my uncle. Who's that guy? Yeah. <laughs> my, my uncle works for the fire department and they use them. He takes it everywhere. So he always has a Wi-Fi signal. So he turned me on to it. So I do apologize if it, yes, exactly. It makes a hot spot. So yes. unfortunately it cuts out here and there. But I'm going to tell you guys, it's not the same as a hot spot because we tried a hot spot through AT&T, through oh, Sprint, man. through all of them and it didn't work. They didn't work. So let's go ahead and put some pickling white gel stain on here and you guys can see how strong it is. Okay. So I'm just going to take, this is my uh, French tip brush from Dixie Belle and I'm just going to dig it into these crevices and you can see right off the bat how white that gel stain is. Now if I want to thin this coverage out, I can. Okay, so I can make this thinner coverage. It's pretty thick on its own and how I would do that is the gel or the no pain gel stains are oil based. So I would take a little bit of mineral spirits on my paper plate that's filled <laughs> with baking soda. It's like we went to the beach. Yeah, and I'm just going to Uh, yeah. And I'm going to add a little bit of mineral spirits. I'm going to use my same brush. Okay, and I can thin this out to whatever consistency I want it to with a little bit of mineral spirits. Mineral spirits thins oil-based products, okay? And then I'm going to take that and just like I was I just want to get I want to get everybody in there. Oh, I, I feel bad for last time. So I need to add a drawer Let's get on in there. And then I would wipe that back to where the white just sticks in the details. Okay, can you guys see how it just went into the details? So that was the pickling white gel stain. We thinned it with a little bit of mineral spirits. Now I'm going to show you guys the uh, voodoo gel stain. So the voodoo gel stain is water-based. And the basic difference between the two is the voodoos give a little bit lighter coverage. It's a little more translucent. So here where we thinned the oil base to get it, to get it thinner, the voodoos start out thinner. I'm not worried about this because I'm gonna make this a consistent finish across the front. So for the voodoo, it squirts out. I'm just gonna squirt some onto the same plate, not where I have my mineral spirits on the other side. And it just squirts out like a liquid. You guys can see it coming out, it's dripping. Okay, it um, comes with these nozzles on the bottles, which are really nice. And then I'm just gonna take a different brush and I'm going to take my, this is my voodoo gel stain, and I can put this in my crevices. Now that's nice. Sorry, that's my, that's my favorite. It's how that little molding turned out with the, uh, the blasting. Uh, unless I ruin it with my whitewash. Don't you even. <laughs> and then I can take it and wipe it back, and I've got a nice light whitewash in my crevices right there. I like the voodoos on here. I probably would not choose the the no paint gel stain because I want this to be a lighter coverage. Just very subtle. I want it to gather in the um, low points and just bring out some of those details. And then your other option is uh, besting wax in white. So I'm going to take yet another brush. I'm using natural bristle brushes for these. I want a little bit of rigidity to dig into those crevices. And this is a um, 
chip brush that I just cut the tips off and that just makes it a little bit more rigid, makes it a wax, great wax brush by just cutting the tips off of a chip, chip brush. Okay, the wax is going to be the lightest coverage of all three of these, but you can see that, I, I mean, I could use, I could pick and choose what product I really wanted or maybe even just what I have on hand and make that work and get the same look with all three of these. There, that happens with a, a lot of the products. Sometimes they're interchangeable. You could use a wax or a glaze. So of all, what do I like the best is the no pain gel stain for this. This is the perfect, perfect use for the no pain gel stain. It just gave me um, nice saturated coverage in my, in my low points and I was able to wipe it off easily from my high points, that's going to be my choice. I actually um, did a little test spot before we came on with the three, so I kind of had an idea what I wanted to use. So do a test spot if you're not sure and see which one gives you the results that you want. Okay, so that's the, that's how I'm going to continue. So let's go ahead and work on this. I'm step you back so you can here. see, um, so let's see let's, overall. I'm... I'm um, the other thing about the Voodoo gel stain, which is the one that I chose, is these are water-based, so... Oh, man, I love that Amazon van. Oh, man, I thought that was the rooster. <laughs> <laughs> what is the problem? It was up all night. Okay, I can use water with the Voodoo gel stain because it's a water base, so I want to thin it, and I want it to fall into some of these crevices. So I can put water in it. Get a little bit more on my brush and I can stretch it. And then I still want to wipe this back just so it goes into that wood grain. Oh, Tony, we sanded, we blasted. Yep, you're going to want to catch the replay to find out how we got to this point. Uh, this will be available on the Dixieville page. I'll also repost it onto my page at Brush by Brandy when we're done. And then I'm just going to wipe away the excess, so all I'm left with is a little bit of white, kind of a bleached wood look. And I'm still going to have contrast from the light woods that are on the piece. See, I've got light woods and dark woods next to it. I'll still keep that. I need a little bit more of my voodoo. I'm going to put it here on my plate. I think my lid is clogged on this because it's not coming out very good. And all that you do when that happens is you could just unscrew this tip. And you can see in here where you've got a clog in it. I think I've got a little clog in mine. Okay. And then same thing. I want to come over here. A little bit of water will thin it out. You can dig it in all these details. Do you have a before picture of this piece? Um, yeah, I think I do. The picture that I've got on my page is what it looks like after sanding, but before soda blasting. And you can't really tell the difference with that because unless you get in on the details where all the dark stain was stuck. Now, what about when we got the piece? Do you have? I think I do. I'd have to go through my phone now. I think I do because I always save photos of my pieces. So I probably do. And I usually post those when I post the finished piece. I'll post... A uh, good before and after too, so you can see how far it's come. Okay, this is a water-based gel stain. I'm putting it over raw wood. It can yellow a little bit. I don't really care in this case because it's going in the crevices and it's going against a wood finish. So you're not going to notice it. Like I can see right now, if I leave it on here as a full coverage finish, you guys see it yellowing a little bit, but I'm wiping it all back. And that's going to happen because it's water-based gel stain with reacting with the oils of the wood. Give myself a little bit of water because I want to wipe it back some more. I really want super light coverage just picking up the wood grain. <clears throat> Let's 
open this door so I can get the other side of this. Now, for the record, there is nothing. This is bare, bare wood. wood. I mean, we got it all the way down to the true bare wood. Okay, I'm going to clean out as much of the details of this of this molding here. This uh, what is this? A corbel or something? As I can. I don't want to get into the technical names. It's a carved piece of wood. <laughs> That's whatever you want to call this carved piece of wood right here. Okay, and then if I've got spots where I feel like I want them to be even more white. You know, I really want to get in here. This is my white wax. I could come in here and just... Just highlight that a little bit. So if I feel like I've got areas that are too light, I can come back and just put the, the gel stain or whatever product I use for my whitewash into the crevices. I just realized that since we're live on location, we need to install a clock on the outside of the house. I know, I have no idea what time it is. I just asked for the watch. 6.30. Oh. And then you just have water in that spray bottle. Yeah, just water. A little H2O. Just water. Um, if you're doing something like this, you want to work in small areas at a time because your product will start setting up on you. Oh, you know what I just realized? I used the other gel stain down here. <laughs> Oh, whoopsie. I was like, why is this so much thicker coverage? So that's okay because then I just take a little bit of my mineral spirits and I can lighten up that coverage too. Yes, Dana, it was a nice day out. It was a nice day overall today. Yeah, we are um, finally seeing a little bit of relief from the fires, from the, all the, or from the smoke from all the fires in California. We and if anybody's have... out there in some affected areas, or potentially affected areas, I wish you the best. We actually have some blue skies today. So this is all I'm going to do to this entire piece, is I'm going to give it a whitewash that stays heavier in these crevices. Like, I love how this looks down here. The light wood against the dark wood and then that that white around it just kind of looks like a halo effect it's really pretty and then again if i feel like i want to add a little bit more this is my white wax i'm just going to deliberately the wax is easier to deliberately apply where just where i want it it also wipes back a little bit easier i think yeah see that um that just got into the crevices a little bit more and this again is the white wax. So when I want it just a little bit more in spots, I can use that to add to it. Let's do a leg right here. And you're going to top coat this. Yes, I will. I will. After this is done, I will clear coat all of it. This is my white wax again. I like all three of these products. It's kind of hard for me to pick like which one, I, I don't think you could go wrong. If you want to do a whitewash over raw wood, um, the gel stains, I, all of them can go over an existing factory finish. So even if you're not at bare wood, like I am here, you want to put this over a factory finish. You could do any of these products over your existing finish. I love the white in the details. It just takes down some of the orangey tones in the wood. It's gonna really bring out some of this. You know, I can come back in here to some of these crevices and just get them a little more white. Let's clean this door up around here. That's kind of bothering me too.
What are you going to do to the top of this piece? Same finish, same exact finish. I'm going to whitewash it just so it gets into the wood grain. Same exact finish. Add a clear coat to it. Very much will match the body. Could you do a, um, a whitewash with watered down fluff or cotton? Yes, yes. I said that and mentioned that in the beginning. You can absolutely use paint. You're going to get a little more coverage than I am here. Um, depending on how much you water it down will determine how saturated your coverage is. I'm going to lighten this up a little bit. You could do this with black too, you guys. You could do a black wash. So you hear the term whitewash more often. It doesn't have to be. All of these same products I'm using tonight also come in a black. So you could most definitely do a black wash too if you wanted all your crevices to be black instead of the white that I'm using. I'm just gonna even out this door here. I don't know. I think whoever soda blasted that, I, that person's a genius. I don't know. I'm I, trying to cover it all back up again, so it doesn't really matter right now. <laughs> so glad I did it. <laughs> Just to be covered up again. Trying to clean this out as much as I can. I want to leave it in the crevices and just really wipe off those high points. Here, I'm going to come in there. Trying to get right along here. But where you really see it is that it gets into, it just adds kind of this muted, it's not quite such a wood, such a dark wood effect. It's beautiful up here in these moldings. I'm going to get up here underneath this lip while I'm doing it because I do want that to be covered as well. You know, some think that your painting is very artistic, but, you know, whoever, whoever cleaned up those <laughs> moldings. This again? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do want to, I do want to reiterate this is, if you use a water-based product over raw wood like this, you can get yellowing. So just keep in mind with that. You guys asked if you could do this with white paint. Um, you, if you don't want the yellowing, you can add a coat of clear boss, but otherwise it can yellow in some of your crevices. Just keep that in mind if you choose a water-based product for this, which is the paint, the wax, or the voodoo. Now, is there a driver for yellowing, like a particular color or kind of wood? Um, no? Okay, so- The question was any, not asked, I'm asking. Anytime you've got raw wood, it will have a tendency to yellow because it's oil, every, every wood has oils. Some are just stronger than others. And those are the ones that tend to yellow even through a clear coat. And those are gonna be like mahogany, pine knots are really oily. Um, cedar's really oily. Uh, um, ah, I'm thinking of a wood and I can't think of the name. Um, anyway. Woods that tend to have really strong oils have a higher tendency to yellow. So I couldn't tell you every variety of wood that's on here, but I can tell you right now that it's raw wood. It's going to have a tendency to yellow. It's got no barrier whatsoever. Even this, even if it has light oils in this species, it's going to come through my paint because it's got no barrier whatsoever. We'll lighten this up. You guys, I am using my, um, I started out using my Voodoo gel stain. I am using my um, no pain gel stain. This is the oil base that I'm using. And I'm lightening it up with mineral spirits every time. So that was a little bit of mineral spirits added. So it just stays in this fluting right here. I need to get like a smaller rag or something. Maybe I could use one of these brushes. There we go. I can't get in between this right here. So I just got a brush and I'm brushing it out and then I'll come wipe it back up. 
So anyway, I'm going to keep going. This will take me some time. It's not a painted finish, but it's still going to take me some time to get a whitewash on this wood. But I just love around all this molding right here, the softness of the white against the wood. I'm going to try to keep my coverage as consistent as possible across the front of it. And you really get to determine how much or how little you want to leave behind on your wood. How strong you want that white. And the video will be posted. Yes, this will be posted on replay if you want to see how we got here. That's beautiful. That leg is going to be beautiful. So I'm going to even this up. I'll get it consistent across the whole front and I'm going to whitewash the whole thing. So you're still going to have, you're still going to see all the wood grain. You're still going to see the variety between the dark and the light. It's just going to have white that sits in the crevices and brings out all the details. All right, you guys, I'm going to get off. I've got work to do. <laughs> you guys are bothering me. Kidding. Um, no, I'm going to pop off, you guys, but that was a lot of information in a short video. So uh, go catch the replay if you have any questions. Um, feel free to add them in the comment thread after the fact. It always helps if you tag me so that I see them. Um, that's the little at symbol and then my business name, which is Brushed by Brandy, so I can find them. Um, if you guys don't already go follow me at Brush by Brandy too. Um, you guys can find a link to anything I used tonight, which is the Dixie Belle uh, No Pain Gel Stain, the Voodoo Gel Stain, and we also used White Wax. Um, and you can find those at the link in the post I put above. You can also find a local retailer if you want to go check out the products in person. Um, and I will let you guys go, and I will be back next Thursday. We'll work on another project together. Thank you guys. Good night.